Okay, so it's Pocket Gamer. We're in uh, we're in Helsinki for a conference, free your free your games. So there's lots of Finnish people here, but not just Finnish people. It's a whole Northern European thing. So, Julia, you've come all the way from St. Petersburg. Why yeah. have you come to the conference? What's, it, what, what's going on? Here? Yeah, so I'm from Nevasoft, and uh, Nevasoft is a Russian game publisher and developer. And actually, St. Petersburg is only three and a half hours away from Helsinki, so for us it's very close. And uh, we've been in business for like 11 years now, and of course now we are interested in free-to-play games. And we're, yeah, yeah, we are developing free-to-play games ourselves, and here I'm actually looking for developers uh, who have cool titles, like Super for example, You're super super. Make, <laughs> that would be great. Deal. That would be a great idea. No, but I'm looking for smaller developers who probably have cool games, and we are offering to publish their games on the Russian market because it has its own peculiarities, and you have to know you have to know the audience. You have to have local partners. So what we do, we handle all the localization and then launch the game on the Russian App Store and let the developer get the most revenue from the Russian App Store. So how's the, how's the Russian kind of game players? How are they different to American players or English players? Players, well, first of all, Russians are used to the localized content. Okay. It's like not many people speak English. And, uh, well, the best games, the best games still can be successful, but if we're speaking about good games, for example, just being localized gives like a big push for them. And like all the media is localized, and uh, like people do not read English media, for example. Like uh, Pocket Gamer is not that big yet, probably, <laughs> in Russia. So to, um, to deliver your content to users, you have to know where to publish it, you have to know editors, journalists, and stuff like that. And uh, we have lots of subscribers uh, we were in the casual downloadable business before and those players are still the same so they switch to different devices but we have the access to them and, and is it the Russian market is more more Android I guess than iOS or they, how, how does that plan out? It depends uh, speaking about downloads for example in terms of downloads the Android is probably bigger yeah. but there are lots there is lots of piracy in Russia uh, so uh, the <laughs> no revenue problem. yeah the revenue is coming from iOS. The market is growing very, like, very fast. And uh, I know that this spring, Russia was number six, I think, in the world in terms of revenue on iPad. And uh, in terms of Android, for example, speaking about Android, we were number four in terms of downloads, but not the revenue. Let's <laughs> we forget that Russia is a massive market. It's like 200 million people, something like that. I can't even say right now, but it's massive, yeah. and it's uh, again there are official numbers which uh, count the official sales of devices, but there are lots of we call it gray sales okay. devices which come from different countries because it's cheaper. So a lot of people have uh, smartphones right now. I guess the Russian thing, as a the Russian market as well, it kind of also includes countries like Ukraine and Belarus and some of the other former Soviet states. Exactly, exactly. Speaking about the Russian market, we speak about Russian speakers users okay. and those include countries like Ukraine Belarus even Estonia for example or Georgia or like lots of countries so usually when we acquire rights for the Russian version we publish it we make it available worldwide but only in Russian and uh, yeah this is the access to like it gives you the access to like lots of people and the, the amount it's like the number is growing every day Excellent. Thanks for your time. thank you